Let me begin not with words, but with shapes and pictures. Almost certainly, you will recognize some of the images and perhaps even some of the shapes. All of these marvelous artistic creations are works of the Renaissance, a dramatic period of roughly 300 years of intellectual and cultural experimentation that began in Italy, particularly Florence, in the 14th century and moved northwards through Europe. And you would certainly recognize names like the Italian artists Donatello. What about Michelangelo? And who can forget Raphael? And of course we have to talk about Leonardo da Vinci, the great scholar and artist. Now, less familiar, but still very noteworthy, are the Dutch Jan van Eyck and Germany's Albrecht Dürer. The printing press was invented by Gutenberg in 1439 and from those presses came some of the best known works in literature. Think of Machiavelli's The Prince, Thomas More's Utopia, or any of Shakespeare's plays. Also, some of the world's best known, if not loved, politicians lived in these times. There were the Medici from Florence, as well as Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, both from England. And the lesser known, but for Canada immensely important, King Francois I, who commissioned Jacques Cartier to look for the land that now we call Canada. And some of Christianity's most influential theologians wrote during this time. There was the Dutch humanitarian Erasmus and the German reformer Luther. And yet the world renaissance is French for rebirth. So what was reborn? Well, the Renaissance was preceded by the Middle Ages, a period of almost a thousand years dating from the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 until roughly 1450 or 1500. The Middle Ages or medieval period was marked by the collapse of learning and scholarship relative to classical antiquity and the rise of feudal land and social structures with the, the prominence of the Catholic Church. However, the last century of the Middle Ages has been seen as an extensive positive reassessment of the Middle Ages, but to the scholars of the Renaissance there was indeed a rebirth from a prior period of darkness, ignorance, superstition, and fear to a time of light, learning, reason, and wonder. Certainly, this was true of mathematics, 
No notable mathematics was accomplished in Europe in the Middle Ages from 476 to roughly 1500. But late in the Renaissance period, there was an explosion of profound mathematics. The analytic geometry of Descartes, the calculus of Newton and Leibniz, and the probability of Pascal and Fermat. And, like with all births, there was pain during the Renaissance. There were conflicts between the faithful who adhered to a transcendent spirituality and the humanists, many of whom were also faithful but saw scope for reason. In this module, I will look at how art influenced mathematics. But before we get to the visual arts, I want to spend some time with the performing arts. Specifically, I want to study Mark Anthony's funeral oration for the just murdered Julius Caesar in Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar. In a mathematics, even a history of mathematics course, why would I bother with Shakespeare, who I'm sure many of you hated in high school? Well, there are several reasons. First, it gives us a chance to examine the Renaissance work. Second, it gives us a chance to contrast the early Renaissance where humanists looked back to the Greek and the Roman classics, to the late Renaissance where scientists looked ahead with confidence in the expectation of uncovering the mysteries of the universe. Third, it allows to strengthen connections. And fourth, it illustrates the differences between disciplines. But before we listen to one of the many renditions, let's recall the setting. After we listen, we will do a line-by-line -line reading of the speech. So it happens that Julius Caesar was born a high-ranking family, was a Roman general and a political leader. His success on the battlefield and his generosity with both his winnings and his enemies made him immensely popular with the lower and middle classes. After his complete victory against Pompey in the Civil War of 49, Julius Caesar became a dictator in perpetuity of Rome, in clear violation of the Republic's restraints against powerful citizens and against the wishes of many in the Roman Senate. So that in 44 BC, a large group of senators, led by Marcus Brutus, assassinated Caesar in the Senate. Brutus was a nephew of Caesar and for some time had regarded his uncle highly. Despite serious differences, including Brutus's support of the losing side in Pompey's war against Caesar, Caesar still flat enough of his nephew to place him next to the succession after Octavian, who would later become the first emperor under the name Augustus. But Brutus was persuaded that the killing of Caesar was essential to the reestablishment of the Republic, so Caesar was slain on his way to the Senate. So the philosophies of the classical Greek and Roman cultures provided the scholars of the Renaissance with the imagination creativity, scope, and perspective that still shapes our culture in the 21st century. The center of per perspectivity they created was projected to our time so that the axes of perspectivity remained albeit with a gap in the Middle Ages. And so is the richness of the Renaissance, in the arts, and in the sciences.